Uh, Richard will be leading us in our singing. Jerry will give us our first prayer, and he, ha he has an announcement uh, to make as well. Uh, Billy Wayne and I will serve the Lord's table. Freddie will bring us our lesson. And Ernest, would you dismiss us at the proper time, please? We'll turn it over to Richard. Jesus is all the world to me, my light, my joy, my hope. He is my strength from day to day, without him I would fall. When I am sad to live my goal, no other one can cheer me so. When I am sad, he makes me glad. Song with song number 528. 528. Just a note, uh, we would sing all verses of all the songs until we get to the invitation. So, just in case pretty. Never mind. <laughs> don't, don't, don't you stop. <laughs> I know that my Redeemer lives and never ran for me. I know eternal life he gives from sin and sorrow free. I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know, I know eternal life he gives. I know. Yeah. <laughs> 
If the name of the Savior is precious to you, your share has been constant and tender and true. And the light of his presence has brightened your wind. Oh, will you not tell of your gladness today? Oh, will you not tell it today? Will you not tell it today? In the light of his presence and light, your baby, oh, will you not tell it today? If your faith in the Savior has brought its reward, that the strength you have found in the strength of your Lord, that the hope of the rest of his palace is sweet, oh, will you not, brother, the story repeat? Oh, will you not tell it today? Will you not tell it today? In the light of his presence and light, your way he go, will you not tell it today? If the souls all around you are living in sin, if the pastor has told you to bid them come in, if the sweet invitation they never have heard, Oh, will you not tell them your cheering in words? Oh, will you not tell it today? Will you not tell it today? In the light of this presence and right, your way he go, will you not tell it today? Amen. Please, some number 535. 535. Endure them with I'm in the way of bright and shining bear. I'm in the glory and bear. You're in the world that Jesus says you did. Yes, I'm in the glory and bear. Oh, I'm in the glory and bear. Oh, I'm in the glory and bear. Yeah, the land is nearer and the way grows more clearer. Oh, I'm in. Oh! 
Yeah. 
396. 396. No, not one. Sing the song for the lesson this morning. There's not a man like the lonely Jesus. Sing it. No, not one. No, not one. None else can give all the souls in Jesus. Sing it. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows all about the struggles and he will guide you in the day. He's the Lord. There's not a man like the Lord in Jesus. Sing it. No, not one. No, no, not one. No friend like him is so high and grown. He's singing it. No, not one. No, no, not one. And yet the friend is so deep and grown. He's singing it. No, not one. No, no, not one. Jesus knows all about the struggles and he will guide you the dead. we can to serve 
the Lord. Let's begin uh, with prayer and we'll continue our study in the book of Philippians. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the blessings that you've given us. Thank you um, that you've allowed us to come to this place and to serve you. Lord, um, help us always to realize and to put you as a priority in our lives. Sometimes um, I admit, Father, I don't do that and we don't do that. But we ask, Lord, that you allow us to always be reminded, um, just like it was said uh, in the book of Acts, in, in you we live, we move, and we have our very being. And we need to give you all the acknowledgement and the praise and the thought and the honor. Thank you for sending your son to die on the cross, taking our place. Lord, he paid a debt that he didn't owe, all because you loved us, you loved us, you loved us so. Be with the worship experience, be with the message, Father, that something said, um, people will look past me and listen to you so that um, all of us can be better Christians for having come to worship you and encourage each other. Thank you for this and all your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's continue our, our talk, um, our, our series lesson. And I don't know about you, and I say this, I say this all the time. Usually the person doing the teaching benefits from the lesson more than perhaps the students. But I'm really enjoying sinking my teeth in to the book of Philippians. It, it doesn't have any particular doctrinal issues. Paul didn't write this particular book to deal with any issues per se. It's a book of encouragement. And I don't know about you, um, every once in a while in life, I get a little weary. You know, this, this load gets a little heavy. And uh, I just need some encouragement. And those times for me, I go to the book of Philippians. And so we're calling this series uh, Principles from Philippians Living Life in the Joy of the Lord. Sometimes uh, life has its way of just knocking you down and sucking the joy uh, right out of you. But if you ever need some encouragement, um, I would say to you, do like I do. Go to the book of Philippians, read through that, uh, prayerfully listen to what God has to say, and then make the necessary adjustments in your life, and I will guarantee you, you will restore your joy in the Lord. Again, Philippians wasn't written to address any particular problems. Paul had a deep, sincere love for these people. In fact, they supported him uh, monetarily um, in his mission. And so he just really loved the church at Philippi. And, and this letter really is to encourage them to not lose their joy in the Lord. You can hear it in Paul's writing, chapter 4, verse 1, one of my favorite spots in the book. Therefore, brothers and sisters, um, uh, you whom I love and I long for, my joy and my crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, dear friends. You hear it? Um, almost back when we used to write letters, you could, and we don't do that anymore, we send emails, but when we used to write letters, we had a certain format that we would start with a greeting or salutation, and we'd spread goodwill, and then we'd get to the body of it, and then near the end, if you're writing mom and dad, that's when you would ask for the money, okay? Uh, but, but in this case, Paul, Paul didn't do that. The, the book itself is just overwhelming with joy and affection, and you can hear that. Um, you can hear that all through the book. Again, the theme of the book, quite simple, by centering our lives around uh, Christ, we can experience joy. Don't know about you, but it's usually when I take my eyes off of God or I try to handle things on, myself, on my own, I try to resolve my own issues absent of God's wisdom, absent of God's prompting, that's usually when I get in trouble and I suspect I'm not going to make you raise your hand, but I suspect I'm not by myself. The key verse, verse 21, you know this, you've heard it for years, for me to live is Christ, and for me to die is gain. I, that confused me for a number of years until I really understood the context in which he made that statement. Everything that Paul says he's done in his life fails in comparison to the richness that God has uh, for him to live. And even if he had to face death, or when he had to face death, that was still a gain because it brought him closer to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, another brief overview. 
chapter 1, he's talking about the joy of living for Christ. Christ is my life. Chapter 2, he's talking about the joy of serving Christ. Christ is my model. And listen, I won't stay here long, but you're going to model somebody in your life. Maybe it's a sports figure. Maybe it's somebody that you admire. As Christians, we all need to make Christ our life model. Chapter 3, the joy of knowing Christ. That's what we're going to do here in just a few minutes. Christ is my goal. He is my goal. There's many of goals that you set for yourself in life, but the ultimate goal needs to be, I want to get closer and closer to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I want to, I want to know him. We'll see that in just a minute. Next week, chapter 4, and I'm really needing this one in my life right now anyway, enjoying peace in Christ. He is my contentment. When, when things around me, um, the workplace, things in the world kind of get chaotic, I need some peace. I need some stability. And I'll invite you back next week and we'll look at how to enjoy peace in life. Chapter 3, verse 10 through 14. Listen to how uh, Paul is saying, I want to get closer to Christ. I want to know Christ. Listen to this. I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. You hear it? You hear the modeling there? And so somehow attaining to the resurrection of the dead, not that I've already obtained all of this or I've already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that uh, which Christ took hold of me. Verse 13, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to be taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what's behind and straining forward. You see the athletic metaphor there? My brief track experience in high school, and again, people ask me, you know, did you run track? No, the track ran me. <laughs> but, but I do understand, but I do understand. The, the metaphor here, when you're straining, you're, you're heading towards that finish line, you're giving it all you got to get there. That's the idea. Um, forgetting what's behind and straining toward what's ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Pressing toward the prize. If we're going to make Christ our model in our lives, it's almost like the athlete who's running track, not the track ran him. Uh, but, but Philippians chapter 3 really talks about Christ as our model. And if we're going to press towards the prize, there's five things in this text. I'm not going to give you all five now. I'll give you three now and then two tonight online that will really help us keep our mind focused and press towards the goal. Again, chapter 3 overview, three things. Number one, if you read chapter 3 and read it all the way through, the error of placing confidence in fleshly accomplishments. Now, if I had more time, I'd spend on that. A lot of time, we, we spend our time working for fleshly goals at the expense of our spiritual ones. And I think we have it backwards. We need to flip it. We need to spend more time working towards attaining our spiritual goals and not so much Fleshly. Why? Because flesh and blood is going to pass away. But our home eternally is in heaven. Chapter uh, 3, verse 2 through 6. To understand that we need to strive toward perfection in our desire to know Christ. Just coming to church ain't good enough. You know, just, I'm here every Wednesday. But if I'm, I'm here every Sunday. I don't miss. I don't miss. Good. That's what you're supposed to do. But that's not the end. That's not the end. At all. And then the third one, to be reminded, and I'll talk more about this in the end, our true citizenship is in heaven. And we sing this song all the time, this world is not my home, I'm just passing through. Let me give you, there are five, I'm going to just give you three this morning. Online tonight, I'll do the other two. If you're going to press on towards the prize in Christ Jesus, according to Philippians Chapter 3, the first thing we need to understand 
is it's okay to be dissatisfied. Number one is dissatisfaction. What do I mean by dissatisfaction? Until you get sick and tired of being sick and tired about something, that's the only time it's going to change. I'm on a new quest in my life. You prayed for me through my chocolate conversion, and I made it. Okay? Dark chocolate now is the only thing I eat. I didn't think I was going to make it, but I made it. Y'all prayed me through. Thank you. I'm on another quest. I got to lose some weight. Because I understand that my general health would be better for me to be able to lose some weight. So I've gotten some encouragement from my daughter, um, who's on this keto diet. And I said, you know what? Uh, I think I can try to do that for my own general health. I got, dis I got dissatisfied with the way that I am. Now, if you ever want me to change, let me back up. If you ever want me to not change, keep bugging me about it, okay? But if I make up my own mind to change and I get sick and tired of being sick and tired, then I can change. Tony Robbins said this, and I agree with this quote. Until you get dissatisfied, you won't do anything to really move your life to another level. Dissatisfaction is a gem. I don't know about that. I'm getting there. Uh, if you're totally satisfied, you're going to get comfortable. And then your life begins to deteriorate. I see that. So I got, I got dissatisfied. And that's why I'm on this quest. 20 pounds uh, would, would do me a world of good. But until we get dissatisfied with our station in life and where we are, brothers and sisters, I don't think we'll ever will ever change. Verse 12 is the reference. A Christian should never be satisfied with where he or she is at any present time. As Christians, we ought to always be striving to do better, striving to, to, to attain more goals and better goals in Christ Jesus. Verse 12, Paul said, not that I've already obtained this or I've arrived to the goal, but I press on and I take hold of that which Christ Jesus took hold of me. We always need to be striving. We always need to be seeking to do better. If I'm only reading my Bible 15 minutes uh, a day, then maybe I need to go for 30 minutes a day. Okay, maybe not a day. Maybe set a goal. I'm going to read my Bible 15 minutes a week. Start small and move forward. We always need to be dissatisfied first before we can experience permanent and lasting change. Won't read this, but you remember when Jesus was walking on the water and Peter made up his mind that he wanted to join him? I submit to you, and I would argue, Peter got dissatisfied with being in the boat. And he got out and he began to do it. He began to take steps, and he was actually walking on the water. The problem is, when he started looking at the waves, and his brain kicked in. Oh my God, I'm not supposed to be. That's when he began to sink. And that's a life lesson for us. Just because you get dissatisfied and you take enough steps towards your goal, don't look around and, and get afraid. You started to walk by faith, continue your walk by faith. Step one, dissatisfaction. You're going to press on to the goal. It's okay to get dissatisfied. Number two, we got to have some devotion. And everybody is devoted to something. If you don't believe it, let me have your checkbook ledger and let me reconcile it. I'll tell you what you're devoted to. What you have spent most of your money on, that's your devotion. See, I know that, that makes people upset, but it's still true. If you reconcile your, 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 your bank ledger and you look and see that you spent three quarters of your monthly salary on Nabisco chocolate chip cookies, you <laughs> devoted to Nabisco chocolate chip. Don't laugh. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. I'm kidding. It's okay to be devoted. What does that mean? Verse 5 and verse 6, Paul said, I know myself have uh, reasons for such confidence. If someone else thinks they have reasons to boast, King James Version says there, in the flesh, I have more. He's really saying, look, do not put stock in this thing called the flesh because it's not going to last. We need to put stock in things that are eternal. And if, if somebody wants bragging rights, Paul says, about fleshly accomplishments, okay, let's go there. 
I have more. Born a Hebrew of Hebrews. Trained. And he goes through everything and he says at the end of that, it's not, it's not enough. The flesh is nothing to put stock in. But as Christians, we need to be devoted to the spirit and spiritual things. With single-mindedness of an athlete in training, we've got to lay aside everything that's harmful for the sake of anything that may distract us from our eye being on the goal or being effective Christians. Jesus said it like this. You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. This is the first and great commandment. Jesus says, the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Did you see it? Did you see the order there? If I don't love myself, my neighbor is in trouble. And so what we need to do after we get dissatisfied, we need to look at our devotion. Where's our allegiance? Who do we, who, who do we fan our allegiance to? It always, always should be on God. Hebrews 12, you remember the text, therefore, since we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and uh, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. It's okay to evaluate your life periodically and say, you know what? This needs to go. This needs we do it in the house for house cleaning. We do it with things that, that we, we need to throw away. Why don't we do that in our spiritual lives? I don't need to spend as much time doing this, but I do need to spend more time reading and studying my Bible. Third and final, and I'll give you the last two tonight. We need to have some direction um, in our lives. Verse 13, um, in, in, in just a second, let me give you this quote. We need to have a goal, and I love this quote. Without a goal, you can't score. <laughs> Without a goal, you can't score. It doesn't make sense to wander and aimlessly live life without setting the proper goals. If you miss the goal, you're none the worse off because you set a goal and you knew exactly where you were going. The second part of verse 13, he says, forgetting what's behind me, and straining towards, pushing forward, straining. Think about, uh, think about track runners, and as you're straining to either grab the baton or you're straining to pass the baton, it still takes some effort because you know you got a goal to meet and what lies ahead. Matthew says it, Jesus says it like this. No man can serve, King James Version, two masters. Either he'll hate the one and love the other, or he'll be devoted to the one and despise the other. You remember it? Jesus said, you cannot serve man and money. I love this text in 20, verse 20, and I'm, I'm wrapping this up. Paul says in verse 20, but our citizenship, King James Version, I like that, that better, our commonwealth uh, is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, our Lord Jesus Christ. We don't need to get too attached to this world or to worldly things. And the song is right. This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. We did some international traveling uh, a few years ago, and they told me I had to get a passport. I said, okay, get a passport. And I enjoyed traveling. It was nice to see London, and we went to Spain, and we took the cruise through the, through the Canary Islands. But it occurred to me, and they said this as we were traveling, be sure and keep up with your passport. Matter of fact, keep it with you on your person if at all possible. And I thought, well, what the, what, what the big deal? I don't understand. And the guy, one of the guys at the Air Force said, sir, you need to understand, we would love to have you stay here in Spain permanently, but you're a citizen of the United States. If you want to go back home, you better keep this passport with you, or you ain't getting past this gate. I said, oh, I understand. I got you. I understand. I love seeing everything. I love the, trying y'all's food. You know, I love meeting the people, but I won't go home. <laughs> I, I got enchiladas waiting on me when I could eat enchiladas. You know, I got chips and salsa waiting on me back at, at home. See, again, it's the same thing. This world is not our home. We're just passing through. And it's almost like 
The Bible is our passport that really is going to help us to get to heaven. That's why it makes no sense not to spend some time every day reading and studying God's word because we don't live, we don't, this isn't our permanent home. We're just passing through. We're just visiting. And so one of the things we need to understand if we are pressing towards a goal, and I'm, I'm, I'm done, if we're pressing towards a goal, we got to realize where we are now is not where God ultimately wants us to be. Give you the last quote. I love this one. Direction, not intention, determines your destination. Direction, not intention, determines your destination. Stay tuned tonight. Number four, we'll talk about determination. We'll do that online. And then uh, also tonight, we'll talk about discipline. These five things, if you put these in your life, it will help keep your mind pressed towards the goal that is in Christ Jesus. But you know, if you have sin in your life, that's going to hinder and block several blessings that God has in store for you. We all sin. We all come short of the glory of God. The beauty of the love God has for us is that he has built into his fellowship. Whenever we come together, he's given us an opportunity to make things right. I would not want to serve a God that was so vengeful that he wouldn't give us a chance to get things right. Sin in your life will hinder your service to God. If you have a prayer need or if you have sinned, the opportunity comes forward. In just a second, James says it like this. Confess your faults one to another. Pray one for another that you might be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. And if you have never obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ, that is, you have not, uh, according to the New Testament, obeyed the gospel, you too stand a guilty distance away from God. That's not to be ashamed of because we were all there at one point. But you can fix it. You come by hearing his word, believing it, repenting of your sins, confessing Christ, being willing to be baptized in water for the remission of your sins. Based on that act of obedience, God will add you to his congregational family. If you have a need that we can meet, whether it's further Bible study, whether it's a prayer need, or you just need prayer for strength and encouragement, we invite you now to come as we stand and sing the song of invitation. Good.